What does it mean to pilot an AC in Armored Core? What is the practical function of ravens, lynxes, and dogs? And what does that tell us about the world of Armored Core going into the fires of Rubicon? What's up gamers, it's Absurd here, and I recently had a small discussion over on the Rubicon Dogs Discord regarding this emblem. I have a lot to say about it, though it goes to some pretty dark places thematically. So I want to issue here a content warning for themes including mental health issues, death, drug addiction, and other graphic images. If you are still along for the ride, then let's get into it. For those who aren't aware of the symbology, this AC emblem is a depiction of a lobotomy, a surgical procedure used for treating mental illness and neurological disorders in patients by severing the prefrontal lobe of the brain with an ice pick or orbitoclast inserted through the eye socket and into the brain. Pretty grotesque, right? There is something extremely human to me about this idea. Your brain isn't working right, so let's poke it with a stick and see what happens. Of course, the procedure is far more complex than that, but the results were roughly what you might expect. Brain damage, increased mental instability often leading to suicide, and death. It's scary to think that what feels like caveman science to us now was modern, only 75 years ago. Without going off onto some crazy tangent, I want to get back to the Armored core. AC pilots are soldiers, mercenaries. Being a veteran soldier myself, I can say from experience that military organizations require a certain neurological type from their members. In the US, one of the criteria for dismissal of a new recruit in basic training is called failure to adapt. Military culture has its own paradigm for what is considered normal in mental and neurological behavior, and those outside of that paradigm are not fit for service. Military organizations have a mission-first priority that often leads to rather dehumanizing behavior. When I was enlisted, we would often joke about how the army needed robots, but we were all they could afford. We would even joke about needing a lobotomy to get through the task at hand. This element of gallows humor, trust me, it got much worse, is clearly present in the design of this AC emblem. The lobotomy represents the dehumanization of the pilot, whether it's willful or forced. Their brain, emotions, identity, has a failure to adapt. But I feel like this joke is far more on the nose than the gallows humor typical to first responders and military personnel. We might joke about lobotomies, but no one is actually getting one. Not for the last 50 years, anyway. But Armored Core has a long history of forced adaptation of neurology to the demands of the setting and its pilots, starting with Human Plus in Armored Core 1, in which humans were augmented to enable greater performance of the AC. And, like I've discussed in previous videos, perhaps even to enable remote mind control of the pilot. Human Plus is a direct allusion to transhumanism, which is symbolized by an H with a plus sign. But recently I found it ironic that Human Plus is actually Human Minus. Human Plus and transhumanism are about augmenting humanity with technology to improve the human condition. And while that sounds noble, what is the cost? To transcend our humanity is to leave that humanity behind. And in the case of the mind control implications of Human Plus, the cost includes sacrificing our autonomy to become those dutiful machines that my enlisted buddies and I joked about the army being unable to afford. This makes me wonder why we still see human pilots in Armored Core at all, if ACs are weapon systems and the pilot's humanity represents a weapons malfunction a flaw in the system that needs remedied with augmentation. Nineball was a mass-produced AI-controlled AC model that topped the ranks of the Raven's Nest. There was a small window of time in the narrative between learning that Nineball is an AI and then later defeating it in battle, where you get the feeling that AI makes a better pilot than humans. Of course, we as a human are able to succeed eventually, which suggests that there's still something special about humans that keeps them relevant in this game of high-tech corporate feudal war. But what is it? 
why do we still see so many human pilots in Armored Core, especially when the trend of augmentation only escalates throughout this series with OP Intensify, AMS, and now Cerebral Coral Control? Why is a metaphorically lobotomized human pilot preferential to an AI-controlled AC? AI can be programmed without the potential failure to adapt human issue that requires increasing levels of augmentation to correct. This is going to sound pretty dark, but it's an issue of dominance. Humans love to dominate and are easy to dominate. In Armored Core 1 with Nine Ball and Armored Core 3 with the controller, the reins of dominance were taken up by AI. But human-led factions and corporations don't want to cede control to an AI. They are at constant war in which they are striving to control everything themselves. Any sufficiently complex and powerful AI that could pilot an AC could be a threat to that human dominance. But a muzzled and restrained human dog can be let off the leash once in a while and always faithfully return to the master's call. In Armored Core 6, this theme is laid right out in the open for us with constant references to dogs, hounds, handlers, and some of the other emblems we see in the Deluxe Edition, with a hand striving against bondage and another gripping a handful of leads like a dog walker. It's been discussed on my channel and all over the internet how this leash and muzzle in this new iteration of Armored Core revolves around Coral, and the coral control device. With the new information we have received in recent weeks, we know that coral is highly addictive, with one of the factions present in Grid 086 being referred to as the dosers, coral addicts. What better way to dominate someone than with a crippling drug addiction? It's an abusive relationship in which you can get away with nearly anything and still have the addict crawling back for more of that pop and sizzle, a reference to the sensation of coral dosing in the ESRB rating. We see this all the time in fiction, and tragically, in real life. An AC pilot is a weapon, a tool of the corporations, a dog bred and augmented for a specific function, a dog who reliably does their job without asking questions, a dog conditioned to the social and emotional expectations of the paradigm, stripped of any failure to adapt malfunctions. A dog that can be unleashed and faithfully returned to the handler's call. And in AC6, the pilots know this. They meme about it with their emblems. What other choice do they have in dealing with this desperate reality than resorting to gallows humor? Is the Fires of Rubicon a story in which we can free ourselves from coral control and regain our humanity? Or is the damage done? Is the coral now integral to who we are? And what does breaking the chains of our handler look like after having left our humanity behind for so long? It really depends on the story they are trying to tell. In Armored Core 4 Answer, we are presented with a moral choice to stop the cradle technology and offer humanity the hope of a future in outer space, but at the cost of subjecting hundreds of millions of people to toxic radiation while we figure out how to reach out for the stars. Or we can preserve the cradles and the people who live on them while foregoing all hope for those who've been abandoned on the surface, doomed to remain looking up through a toxic cloud at the sky and what might have been. It's a bleak choice. There are no winners. Maybe this is the story of the fires of Rubicon. There are no winners in war, but thanks for playing. Raw as it may end up being, we will have to take the blessings of Rubicon for what they are come August 25th.